Hello and welcome to Truth is in the Numbers. I am Mitch Anderson, your host. Tonight we're going to discuss GDP, the gross domestic product. GDP is defined as the sum total of goods and services we consume in a period of time. It mainly reflects our wealth. Supposedly, more stuff we buy, the better off we are. Our leaders are incessantly obsessed with GDP growth as if that really shows the success of our country. In a way, it does. However, nobody stops to think what is expected of us in order to attain that magical 4% growth. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. The GDP of countries is generally expressed in trillions, but to make my point, I propose we follow a typical American household. After all, our country GDP would not exist if each of us did not produce his own GDP. Say we have a young couple starting their adult life at 20 with a combined income of $60,000 a year. At 3.5% growth, their income 20 years later will hit over $120,000. Not bad. They bought a house, they raised children. Till now, their earning and spending growth reflect the betterment of their lives. However, they are not even halfway through their adult life. To keep up with the targeted GDP growth, over the next 25 years, they must more than double their income. Buy a house twice as big, eat twice as much, spend overall twice of what they spend at 40. If they want to do that, it's all great, but what happens if, say, Jim, by now 50, wants to work only part-time and pick up a hobby. Or if one of them wants to quit his job altogether and spend more time with their children. These are total disasters for the GDP growth. Less earning and less spending is supposedly bad regardless of the circumstances. Now let's have a look at a different scenario. Jim, instead of working part-time, gets in a car accident. Now he needs to work two jobs to pay for a new car and all the hospital bills. This is great for the GDP. And if his wife divorces him, that would be even better. One of them would have to find new housing, buy new appliances, furniture. Great for the GDP. So let's face it, unless all of us agree to consume more and more each year for the rest of our lives, we will never sustain the much desired growth. Secondly, the GDP growth does not reflect the quality of our lives. The example above just showed how someone's life can fall apart while his or her GDP growth contribution increases. High debt, expensive medical bills, lawsuits, accidents, they're all GDP positives while they ruin our lives. Many disastrous policies resulted from our leaders' obsession with the so-called growth. In the early 2000s, the government took measures to make housing affordable. The housing prices rocketed and for a while we hit 4% GDP increase. In fact, we were simply selling ridiculously priced houses to each other and called it growth. The experts praised the policy as if expensive housing is something good actually is not good. It resulted in higher rent and higher mortgage for millions of people. We all know what happened next. Maybe it's the time to look for a better indicator of our well-being. One that would not only measure human beings by consumption, but would also look at family life, emotional health, and the satisfaction derived from work. Our GDP per capita increased a lot in the last 30 years. Our suicide, addiction and divorce rate also increased. I really think this tells us something. I am Mitch Anderson and I hope to see you again on The Truth is in the Numbers.